Good afternoon, all those that are joining us through social media. Uh, we are here for our leadership to make some statements. I have with me uh, Honorable Raphael Nakachinda, our uh, Secretary General, and I've got the Vice President of the Patriotic Front, Honorable Given Luvinda. I'll be inviting him shortly to give his statement that he has prepared for today. Honorable Given Luvinda, I invite you. Thank you. Good afternoon, countrymen, countrywomen, and especially the youths of Zambia. I have to apologize that we've come to you at very short notice, but this is for a very good reason, and I shall be explaining a little later. However, allow me on behalf of the Patriotic Front to express our heartfelt condolences to the family of the former Chief Justice, Honorable Anel Silungwe, who passed away on 30th June 2024 and was put to rest today. In so doing, we also want to express our heartfelt condolences to our dear country. As all of us are aware, Honorable Silungwe enjoyed an illustrious career locally and internationally. He will be remembered for his great contributions to the legal fraternity and the development of our country, and also of Namibia's jurisdiction. We join all Zambians in praying to God Almighty that the soul of the departed Anel Selungwe may rest in eternal peace. Fellow countrymen, countrywomen, and youths, today, the case of former President Dr. Edgar Chagualungu, where Mr. Mijeroji Zombwe petitioned the court to come up with a dubious declaration that President Edgar Lungu was not eligible to contest the 2021 elections, and therefore also not eligible to contest any future elections, was expected to take off in the Constitutional Court. However, it is now public knowledge that the matter has been deferred to tomorrow, 9th July 2024. And this is because of the national mourning of Honorable Anel Silungwe. In so saying, I wish, on behalf of the party, to thank all those that turned up today for their support for President Edgar Lungu. I also wish to call upon all of us to turn up tomorrow for this very important court ruling. As many Zambians are aware, the matter before the court has already been dealt with by our courts on four different occasions. President Edgar Chagualungu's lawyers argued before the Constitutional Court that it is the hallmark of every reliable judicial system to remain consistent. He told the country that he had information about people who were planning subversive activities at court. We wonder why he has not gone for those individuals that he says he knows, instead of curtailing the constitutional right of movement of the people and their liberty to attend court proceedings. Why is the executive jittery about this particular matter of the eligibility of President Edgar Chagualu? What will happen to the election results of the 2021 elections in the event that the court was to find that President Edgar Lungu was not eligible to contest those elections? Mm. By the way, why again is this government so jittery? This 
is by far not the only high profile matter to grace our courts. There has been other high profile matters in the past, some actually involving former presidents, and yet the public was not restrained from attending their court proceedings. How many times, by the way, did the then leader of the then opposition UPND, Mr. Hagainde Hijilema, appear in court with a multitude of supporters outside court, singing and themselves, it doesn't have to take the executive. This is what we are referring to as interference in other institutions of government. We now start to wonder whether the executive are already aware of the ruling of the court even before it is delivered. Are they aware? Are they fearing that people will celebrate? Or are they fearing that people will protest? Why is this jitter? Should we be made to wonder whether the judiciary is turning into what parliament has become? An institution that is operating under the whims of the executive? Is that what Jack Mumbo wants us to believe? We need answers to these questions, President Aga Inde. There is no one else who can give us answers except you. Did you instruct your minister to give us the impression that you as the executive are now also interfering with the courts? We demand of you an answer, President Hagainde. Please clarify this. We also wish to express concern at another matter. And this is to do with all the matters surrounding the ruling delivered by the Constitutional Court regarding our nine members of Parliament. Lest people continue to be misled, the Constitutional Court did not in any way pronounce itself on the expulsion of the nine MPs as is provided for at Article 72 of the Republican Constitution. Let me make it clear by saying the court did not nullify the seats. The court did not uphold the expulsion of those nine members of parliament. No. The courts did not make any such pronouncement. It is therefore without any legal justification to declare the seats vacant by Parliament. That action is a blatant erosion of democracy and is lawlessness of the highest order. I want to emphasize that the declaration of those seats as vacant by Parliament is a blatant act of erosion of democracy and is the worst form of lawlessness. This is therefore utter mischief by the Speaker of the National Assembly. We ought to remind ourselves that such an event occurred in the past. And the Speaker of the National Assembly was reminded by the Constitutional Court that Parliament has no jurisdiction over interpretation of the Constitution. And here, Article 72 is being breached at the whims of individuals. Should Zambians stand by to see their constitution being bastardized in this fashion? Let me emphasize that it is totally unconstitutional and it is actually an impeachable offense to nullify the seats of parliamentarians without following the due process of the law. No person in Zambia is above the Republican Constitution. And no institution is above the Republican Constitution. It is the duty of every Zambian to protect the Constitution. The Constitution demands of every citizen to protect it. All of you citizens are therefore called upon to stand up and rise and defend the Constitution of the Republic. Failure of which 
we risk bringing anarchy into this country. Let me move on to another matter. And this is a matter of concern. A matter of the statement made by President Haga Inde Ijirema at the 125 years of existence of the Reformed Church in Zambia. And by the way, on behalf of the Patriotic Front, I would like to commend and congratulate the Reformed Church in Zambia for being shepherds on behalf of Jesus Christ over the last 125 years. Yours has been a mission, and it's a continuing mission to be the salt of the earth. And we wish you another 125 years of success. Now, Mr. Ejidema, in addressing the 125 years celebration, announced that he would be reaching out to meet Zambia's sixth Republican president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu. This obviously was in response to him being implored to do so by the church. It did not come as a voluntary statement. No. No. It had to come only after the church suggested to him that there is value in him meeting his predecessor. Now, many Zambians have been frustrated by Mr. Hijirema's inability to meet his predecessor over the last three years. For the church, it was an act of agency that over the last three years, President Hagainde Hijirema has not had the opportunity, has not given himself the opportunity to meet with his predecessor. It certainly did not have to take the clergy to request him to dialogue with his former president. No. No. It is only decency that dictates that when you assume an office that was held by somebody before you, you confer with them. It's only a matter of decency. However, as far as we know, Mr. Haga in the this pronouncement <laughs> was meant for nothing but window dressing and gallery. And we say this because we know of many other hypocritical pronouncements that Mr. Haga Inde Ejidema has made in the past. And this falls squarely in similar pronouncements. Now, as he confronts this as some of our leaders have been asking, where is the $6 billion that you have borrowed over the last three years? Where has it gone? Yes, we can demonstrate where debt that was incurred in the past went to. Even debt that was incurred by President Kaunda. We can show where it went. The debt incurred by President Chiluba. We can show where it went. The debt incurred by all the previous presidents, including the debt incurred by the PF government, we can show where it went. President Hagainde, can you show us where the six billion debt has gone to? Further, there's a critical lack of money in circulation. How can you possibly grow an economy when there's no liquidity in the economy? How? People now are not capable of buying any goods because there's no money in circulation. How can you possibly expect people to invest when there's no liquidity, when there's no capital in the market? Number three, never in the history of Zambia has there been this great food insecurity where now more than 6.8 million Zambians are facing starvation. And don't blame this on the weather. No. I wish to borrow the words of Haga Inde Ejidema. If a desert such as Dubai can feed its people, a desert Dubai can feed its people, what is lacking? It is not water. 
it is lack of leadership indeed the food insecurity in zambia is due to the poor agricultural policies of the upnd government the poor economic analysis which led to the export of the national strategic maize reserves and give us a break starvation is not biblical no don't abuse the bible in that fashion read that chapter again read it and read it properly in case you don't understand it please invite qualified clergy to come and explain it to you the seven years of plenty was god's way of showing that when he chooses leaders he chooses them well and when he chooses good leaders those leaders prepare for hard times This is the reason why Edgar Chagwalungu made sure that there was more than 1.5 million metric tons in storage because he knew like Joseph in the Bible he knew that there were harder times to come So please don't trivialize this Don't 7 years of plenty was followed by 7 years of nothing But because of God chosen leadership the people of egypt did not starve here we are now we had years of plenty we did not care that there will be years of nothing instead even what we had in reserve we sold we did not learn the lesson of joseph so to go to the people and tell them don't complain about this because this is god no God had already given us sufficient supplies to last us another 2 years but because of our greed we sold the maize that God had given us and now God is showing us that when you are led by people who are chosen by God people rejoice the rest i leave to you Zambians to conclude The fourth matter affecting all Zambians is the worst load shedding experienced in Zambia. We were told there will be 8 hours of load shedding. Now it is almost 24 hours of load shedding in places. And when people say we want to protest they are stopped. Coerced, bribed so they don't protest. How can industry thrive without power and i want to remind all of us zambians that president haga in dehijema again made reference to dubai and what did he say if dubai which doesn't even have a dam has power 24/7 and we with water how come we have no power what is lacking is not water what is lacking is leadership indeed what is lacking is leadership Were we not told that when UPND forms government they will easily build a canal from the Chambeshi river into the Kafue river so that there is enough water Three years along the line the Chand canal hasn't been built again this is just rhetoric lip service promises that are not even meant to be achieved countrymen country women and youths what about the rampant disease outbreaks we had gotten rid of cholera and now cholera is the order of the day in many places now there is even anthrax typhoid dysentery and even syphilis syphilis which the whole world had gotten rid of it has come back who has brought it Why has it come and why at a time like now countrymen country women and youths these crises are sitting on a bed of issues such as poverty unemployment lack of economic opportunities for zambians and rural underdevelopment 
all we are hearing are these glossy statements about uh, somebody bringing $72 billion in Zambia. Which person would come and invest $72 billion in Zambia? And this is being pronounced by an institution of governance, an economic institution of governance for that matter. And we hear about plans to give away 6 million hectares of land, a quarter of Zambia's arable land. Meanwhile, the youths are being treated to unemployment. Zambians are going without title. Zambians are going without land. And yet we're saying we're going to give some foreigner six million hectares of land on 99-year lease. What a scandal. I want to state that Mr. Hijirema has demonstrated very clearly that he lacks keenness to resolve these issues. And as a matter of fact, had he consulted with his predecessor and had he shown respect for previous governments for what they did for Zambia, he could not have caused all these challenges that Zambians are facing today. It is a virtue to honor those who were before you. And it is a virtuous person who looks back and learns from the past and not consider yourselves as the first. No. Kenneth Kaunda indeed was the first Zambian president, but he also consulted his predecessors. All the other presidents we've had in Zambia have consulted their predecessors. As for Edgar Chagwalungu, he consulted all the previous presidents who were alive during his presidency. And this is the reason why he succeeded in the manner that he did. Mr. Ijidema instead has been pouring scorn on all his predecessors. Each time he talks about his predecessors, he says we lacked leadership. He is the first. For the very first time we have a president in Zambia. Yes, indeed, for the very first time we have a president who has no regard for his predecessors. I would like to implore President Hagainde. At least he has another two years. If God wills, may he do better in the next two years. Anyhow, fellow countrymen, countrywomen, and youths, I wish to conclude, and in concluding, I wish to once again implore all of us to turn up at court tomorrow. We are turning up tomorrow because it is our right. And nobody, nobody has the right to restrain us from attending open court sessions. No one. So please come in solidarity. And this is not only in solidarity with Edgar Chagwalungu. No. It is in the protection of our Republican Constitution. It is our right. So please come. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Vice President. Um, with that address by the Vice President, I'd like to thank you uh, for, for your kind attention. Honorable SG, Honorable Rafa Nakachinda, thank you very much. And Honorable Vice President, thank you for that wonderful delivery. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you. God bless our country. We'll see you tomorrow at the Supreme Court grounds.